Welcome to Be Bold Branding, where we discuss the power of differentiating yourself through your own unique story and standout personal brand. Today, we're speaking with a gentleman who published his first book in his early 20s. And since then, he has helped countless individuals become globally successful authors. We'll hear his story and find out how his personal brand helped him to reach that global success. I'm Tanya Eberhardt, founder of Brandface, and we help business stars differentiate themselves. We do that through personal branding. And I'm Michael Carr. I'm the COO of Brandface. I was actually a client before I became a partner in the company. We're the only comprehensive personal brand building system across the globe. And we do Be Bold podcasts to help entrepreneurs take the fear out of putting themselves out there. And uh, we've got a great guest for you here today. So over a decade ago, Tyler Wagner founded AuthorsUnite.com, a publishing company that helps people write publish, and market their books. Where were you when we did this, Tyler? (laughs) After publishing his first book in his early 20s, Conference Crushing was the name of it, Tyler made it his mission to help aspiring authors achieve success in the world of literature. Since then, Authors Unite has helped over 1,000 people become best-selling authors. His authors have been seen on the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, Forbes, Inc., USA Today, Entrepreneur, Fast Company, ABC News, The Huffington Post, speak of Huffington, and more. (laughs) Tyler resides in Miami Beach, Florida. In his spare time, he enjoys reading, doing podcast interviews, and taking long walks around South Point Park. Tyler, welcome to Be Bold Branding. Thank you so much. Grateful to be here. We're happy to have you. And ser- seriously, where were you when we were doing all this? <laughs> I know. We should have connected a few years ago. Had we known. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. We just weren't we lucky sure enough to run across you at that time, Tyler. That's right. All in due time. All in due time. Hey, Tyler, what uh, what inspired you? What, like, what was your inspiration to write your first book? Yeah, great question. So when I uh, I was 19 years old and I was in college and I came across this book, The Four Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss. I'm sure you guys have heard of it. Oh, yeah. um, and it was interesting. Like I was in college and something like didn't feel right, but I didn't know what to do. Um, after reading that book, uh, I literally, I think it was within it was within two weeks. I set up a meeting with my counselor that helps you like choose your major because I was still first half of sophomore year then. And I was like, look, I know I don't want to work for anyone. I want to be an entrepreneur. Like what majors do you have? And essentially they told me they had like a management uh, major. And I was like, yeah, that's not going to cut it. So then I decided to drop out of college. And um, before I did that though, I studied abroad for six months and and had a good six month party. And then I got to work after that. (laughs) Where was that study abroad done? Uh, so it was Vienna, Austria. What was funny about it is it was at the School of Economics there, which is known to be a very difficult school. Um, but knowing I was going to drop out, I went there and uh, not purposely, but I didn't try. I failed all my classes. <laughs> and uh, I went to like 15, 16 different countries over the six months and well worth it. So it's good time. Oh yeah. You, oh, that's smart, man. <laughs> that's super smart. That's bold. I like that. Actually, I like that's that a lot. really bold. And you know, in truth, you knew the end game would be the same. You weren't going to do that anyway. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And it was their way of teaching over there is way different. Um, like you don't get points for like showing up or homework. It is a hundred percent your final. So it's a whole semester and then you're graded 100. And I was like, yeah, not going to happen. So I actually showed up for the finals just to see, and I, I got an F in every class, I think. So yeah. <laughs> <They're hard. laughs> well, I can't match that, but I, I can, I can take a sliver of it and say that I, the only class I ever failed in college was my Spanish class. And, uh, and I loved learning Spanish. That wasn't it. It's just that they put that, they inconveniently placed that class at like two o'clock in the afternoon. And it was near the, I was near the beach. And that <laughs> was not going to do like, I just, I could see that that was not, I, I thought, you know, where am I really going to use my Spanish a whole lot? I mean, you know, it's beach, it's Spanish beach. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> there are decisions you make in life, Tyler, that put you somewhere in the future. And I'm glad it put me right here. 
And I'm sure glad it put you where you are. I think you made the right decision. Although Miami, you got Spanish and the beach. So you didn't have that in Panama City Beach. No, no, no. <laughs> no, you didn't have, at least not then, you didn't have that. Mm -hmm. So, so, it, so you wrote that first book. Tell us a little bit about how that book did for you, like what you learned in writing that book. And at what point did you say, hey, I can help other people do this? Yeah. So what happened is when I dropped out of school, I wanted to be a public speaker. Um, I just love any, that's why podcasting is like my favorite thing. Anything interacting with other people, um, like the opposite of an accountant, basically, is, is what I like to, to do. <laughs> Um, and essentially my way of learning then after dropping out was, uh, going to conferences. Uh, so I would actually email, uh, or if I could find their, um, number or whatever it was, their Skype address then, because this was like 10 years ago. So more people were using Skype. I would get in contact with the creators or founders of these conferences. And I would be honest with them. I'd say, look, I'm a broke college dropout. This was true. I was 80 grand in debt, dropped out of school. I had six month runway before those payments I had to start making. So I was like, I'd love to help you with your event any way you see fit. If like, if we can make an exchange that I can come for free, right? Because a lot of these events were like five grand, 10 grand. Like I didn't have that type of money at that age. So either way, first one I reached out to said, yes. And it was crazy. Get this. The keynote speaker was Tim Ferriss. So literally oh, like six months after six months after I got back from the study abroad, I am backstage with Tim Ferriss at an event. <laughs> it was so great. <laughs> and, um, it was meant to be. Yeah. Yeah. It all just lined up. <laughs> up and then what i noticed is like i don't want to say all the speakers but most of the speakers at that event were authors so from going to other events and this one it just became a thing where i realized like if you want to be a paid public speaker being an author is definitely a good thing and a best-selling author is even better mm -hmm. so i wrote the book and how it ended up doing pretty well is actually a lot of these conference coordinators that i built relationship with prior ended up buying copies in bulk and then giving it to their attendees before events. Cause what the book does is it helps you maximize your ROI at networking events. Um, so either way, I, I grew up in a small town hour North of Philadelphia. So basically if you do anything, everyone knows about it. So when I dropped out, everyone knew about it. When my book hit bestseller on Amazon, everyone knew about it. Um, so how I started helping others is I got hundreds of Facebook messages, um, asking me how I did it, helped a few friends for free. They got the same result. And then just to go a little deeper, I ended up mastering the book marketing side. So we offer, you know, everything from ghostwriting to publishing, but, um, we also know how to like help people hit New York times, wall street journal, and a lot of publishers don't do that. So how we grew the business is building relationship with a lot of publishers. That, very good. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, very good. And, you know, I got it has to be said because being Be Bold uh, podcast, you know, that's it, it's uh, to our audience. Sometimes you don't have to be like this crazy bold, like j leaping off of a, a giant building trying to fly. Sometimes being bold is just literally like what you did saying, you know, I can't pay five thousand dollars to go to this conference but i want to go to this conference so let me just call and offer my services and see if there's value add that i can trade with that's that's a bold move that's a ingenious move um that a lot of people wouldn't think of and uh sure. you know that can and then for you to end up you know effectively behind stage with the very guy that wrote the book that sort of made you think about that to begin with it's, it's just really the turn of events of the universe giving you back what you what you were going to get which is yeah. awesome i mean i just love it man i think that's uh i think that's fantastic yeah thank you yeah yeah, yeah it was crazy it was manifestation at its finest very quickly <laughs> and, oh, yeah. um, the the only last thing i'll just say on the writing of the book um if it's helpful for your audience and you guys probably experience this too is like an editor is essential. So when you're writing your book, don't worry about that first draft being like perfect or anything. I think that's where most people um, that don't end up finishing their book, that is why is they try to perfect the process instead of complete the process. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you my first book, like 
I would have gave it like a two out of 10 from me after the editor went through it. It was like a nine out of 10 couple back and forth and we were perfect with it. So an editor can take you from an F to an A uh, if you look at it from percentages. <laughs> so. yeah. Or from past school, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that, that's, a, that's a great setup for the next question because you know what are some of the most important things that, especially a new author, needs to know about writing, publishing, and marketing a book? Because those are three totally different animals, right? Three sets of skills that are different you know, tell, what are some of those things that are the most important for them to know? So actually I'll work it backwards. So marketing really should start before the writing. And I think that's uh, one of the biggest mistakes a lot of authors make is they, they'll they write this whole book. And, and I know this just because we get a lot of referrals from publishers. And so it happens to us literally like daily. So a publisher will refer us an author and they're like a month away from launch. And they're like, hey, you know, this author wants you to do marketing for them. And I'm like, okay, we can do it, but it would have been nice to know like six months ago or like a year because we could have built out a way better plan. So I'd say like have the end in mind and then you can reverse engineer how you write the book to get whatever goal you're after. Um, Because everybody has a different goal with their book. It could just be impact, could be to get more clients. If it's to get more clients, then you'd want like a back end sales funnel that the book leads into. Um, and there's specific ways to kind of write a book like that to get people to opt in and become part of your list. Um, so that's the marketing. As far as the uh, publishing goes, three types of publishers, uh, service publisher, hybrid and traditional. Again, it goes back to your goals of what you're looking for, but essentially service is you pay up front. And then they'll publish you and you keep all the rights and royalties. Uh, hybrid is like in the middle. So it's usually a 50-50 split and a little bit more hands-on after the publishing. Like you're like they help you further than a service publisher would. Whereas like a service publisher, once it's published, it's usually the agreement is done. Um, and then a traditional, they're going to take like 80-90% of your royalty. Um, but uh, with that, you don't have to pay anything up front. Right. So that's kind of the, the trade off there. And then as far as writing, I, uh, I actually wrote a blog post years ago and what it was titled is why you should write your book backwards. And I don't mean that like literally because, you know, that would be even harder <laughs> than writing a book normally. But what I mean is um, title should actually come last. And this is another kind of procrastination thing I see a lot of people do is they will put off writing their book because they haven't figured out their title. Um, I've had conversations with people where they're, they're like, yeah, it's been months and I'm still trying to figure this title out. And what that actually is, is you avoiding the work, uh, right? So what I recommend is um, write like separate blog posts, think of them as, as blog posts. And then once you write all your chapters or blog posts, the order of them will come kind of to you naturally then you can put them in order, then conclusion, introduction, and then the title comes last. And when you do it that way, a lot of times the conclusion, intro, and title kind of naturally come to you because the meat of the book was the hard work. And um, once you complete that, everything kind of falls into place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, that's great advice. And I can attest to that (laughs) as you go through and you write all of this material, uh, and you go you go into it with one mindset, thinking you're headed in one direction, but you could literally come out of it in a totally different direction in which your title would change anyway. And if you have a title in mind and all you're trying to do is stay in line with the title instead of follow your heart, follow your, you know, the, the train of thought that it leads you down, it could throw you off base again. So I love that thought process of title last. Mm-hmm. I would have never put it that way, but you explained it and that makes perfect sense. Yeah, well, I think the way we both put it was was perfect, actually, because the other thing is just allowing yourself to like write, right? Like, like, I think you said, like following your heart and, and, and you know, in a sense of like not editing while you're writing, uh, but rather just allowing it to be messy. If you misspell a word, don't even go back and fix it. What, just let it flow and know at the end you can clean up the mess. But when you try to edit while you're in flow that messes the whole flow up so 
It yeah. absolutely can. I, uh, but being writers or both of us being writers, I, that has always been my style. I, I'll just feverishly write whatever it is. And uh, then I'll go back. Does that make sense? And, and uh, because I don't want to lose that ideal that uh, I'm trying to get down on paper and you can't type as fast as you can think. So, or write, especially as fast as you can think. Yeah. So He's really much good. better at that than I am. Really I'm good. like an organizer. Everything has to like be in this certain, you know, form and so forth and and uh when i think the best work that i've done so far has been when i didn't really have the title going into it i didn't have it until maybe halfway through putting all the notes together um so so i learned something from that mm -hmm. we we write poetry that way too like in our own she's like she'll write poetry and she puts thought into every word and, and then when she's done with it it's it's 99 percent uh, I, do, I do different. I just, I go through and I write and then I start working on pentameter and things like that. I just get the idea down first because I'm scared I'll lose it. But her memory is much better than mine. So. <laughs> yeah. You guys different are a great people, team. Man, yeah. People have different styles and that's why I love what you do um, because you're helping them like you can have a different style, but there are certain things that you should do within that style, right? You can inject your style into it, but it's kind of like us doing personal branding. You bring your own brand into it, but there are certain principles and certain steps that you must take no matter what your brand is. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the same with probably writing a book. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's um, exact steps that you should do and, and they only vary a little depending on what your overall goal is but the path is still pretty much always the same mm -hmm. yeah exactly we tell everybody it doesn't really matter what industry re industry you're in the principles of personal branding are exactly the same across the board they stay the same. Mm -hmm. yeah no i 100 percent agree they uh well that's a good segue to the my question here about you know because that's what we do personal branding um how how would you say your personal brand or your story or your life story has helped you build your business uh not you know uh, even beyond the beginning question here yeah well i think a lot of times entrepreneurs how they come up with their business is they're kind of solving their own issue um or own problem and then once they do that then they can help others that also have the same problem. So that was really, you know, my story. It was like broke uh, dropout that wanted to start his own business, but, you know, didn't really have any money. I had negative money. Um, and so the best way that I was able to do that is, is really through networking, like through people, uh, right? So I, the book was the first thing. What I'll tell you, a book is like, it's, I want to say in a sense, it's kind of like a fast track um, because I was like 20 years old and because I had best-selling author next to my name, it didn't matter my age, right? So in fact, I almost think it helped because people's jaw would drop and they'd be like, dude, you're only 20, but you wrote a book? Like, that's crazy. I don't know many people that young. So it's, so it's like age could work against you if you're young, but it can also work for you if your brand is set up. So, you know, becoming a best selling author, as you guys know, uh, or just author in general, doesn't even have to be bestseller, is a great foundation for a brand, opens up so many doors. Um, and I wouldn't be anywhere near where I am today without that. Um, and then from there, it just basically helping others and like getting testimonial from them that also built my brand. Like we have over a thousand. Um, well, I can't mention all their, some of them have NDAs and stuff, but over a thousand clients and then hundreds of testimonials that I can use publicly. So, you know, um, best-selling author, hundreds of testimonials, proven track record, like all that goes in together in a brand and getting featured in a lot of mainstream stuff like Inc, Forbes and things like that, Entrepreneur. You know, people look at that when making a buying decision, right? So now it's it's never been easier for me to, sell if you will anything in my business because all you know all the boxes check off uh when you look me up now they didn't always right <laughs> when i was 19 right. but um that's the power of a brand it is yeah. and that authenticity uh that we talk about a whole lot that has to be there 
uh, you've got that and uh, and the testimonials and and how you've structured that obviously continues to feed that machine, which is which is really what we want, you know, as entrepreneurs. So, you know, we advise everybody and, and you know, if you feel differently, please, please speak out. No harm done. But we we advise everybody, hey, if you're writing a book to become a millionaire. <laughs> you're probably not be going to become a millionaire on the copies of the books that you sell, but you can definitely become a millionaire on the back end products and things that that book gives you the credibility to sell. Yeah, I agree. And yeah, it's agree. all about credibility. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's the biggest thing. The book is just the foundation. That That is all it is. And it is very rare. Like I, I probably maybe only a few dozen of our clients have like made like real, real money with their books. Mm -hmm. um, and that's because that was their goal. Like that was their main thing. So they continued on after they worked with us of like hitting bestseller or whatever it was. And they sold hundreds of thousands of copies of their book, but most, and I can actually give an example that proves what you're saying. There's a book that we did like last August and it was called digital millionaire secrets. The author's Dan Henry. And we launched uh, his book to hit Wall Street Journal bestseller. And that week before he even hit the list, he had five times his ROI with us because in his ebook, he had links that led to sales funnels that then led to a webinar that then led to a course um, that at the time, I think he was charging 10 grand for, but it could be more now. But either way, the book was written well. And uh, people wanted to uh, do more with him. So they'd opt in, got more info and bought his course. So it was like hitting Wall Street was great, but he got the money before the, even the list because people went further than his book. But it wasn't the book sales, like the royalties are the right. last thing <laughs> that you make money on. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 yeah, I always tell people you can you you're not going to make a lot of money for the most part on your book. You'll make a lot of money with your with book. Your book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's the with that's book. the best way to put it. <laughs> yep. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Okay, so so we're going to ask you just a few questions so people get to know a little bit about like who exactly you serve, you know, and, and what sets you apart. It's the five questions that every great brand must answer. So we're going to ask you these five questions, Tyler. All yep. right. I'm okay. What sets you apart from others to do the same type of work that you do? I'd say it's our, our marketing. So, and this isn't to say anything bad about the others. It's just, they don't do it. So if you were to look online, um, I actually can't name a publisher that does marketing. So we're, we're like the only ones that do marketing and also publishing that I'm really aware of. So. Love it. Okay. Love so exactly who do you serve is question two. So it's mostly nonfiction um, authors or aspiring authors that have businesses. So uh, business books and personal development books. And these are people that uh, are trying to grow their business, but also making an impact with their book. Perfect. And uh, how do you serve them? And, and you feel free to list several ways or all every way yeah so there's two main ways um so one is just done for you services so we we offer like high-end um done for you services from writing the book for you to launching the book for you um and then the other is courses um so if they want to you know give it a go themselves then we teach what we do in the done for you through course material all right so what qualifies you to serve your ideal customers? Yeah, so I think I, I am a, I'm a product of like my own business, right? So actually, uh, recently I had launched another book and we hit number one on the Wall Street Journal list. So it's like exactly what we do for people I've done for myself and I'm happy with the results. So, <laughs> you know, like great I, answer. that's a great answer. That's absolutely a great answer. And the last question. You know, when we, uh, that, that, there's no better way to even learn than teaching that's others. You know what I mean? But when you can do it out of what you've done, that's obviously makes you authentic and speaks for yeah. itself. All right. And, and this one may also too, but it's one of the important marketing questions in, our, in a brand that when we work with people, how does that make their life better? Yeah. So there's, there's so many different ways. And it's, it's funny when people invest in us, sometimes they'll ask us like, what's the ROI? And I can actually reverse engineer, like if they have a back end product, like the example I gave, like I could 
give some stats and be like, look, if you get this many opt-ins, then this is the chance, you know, this is how much money you can make. But regardless, I think it's all about how you leverage it. And I think it's similar to what you guys do. Like it's hard to put a, an amount of money on what it means when you become a wall street or a New York times bestseller. Right. Because if, if you become one of those and then you do nothing afterward to leverage it, well, then you had like a fun week and, you know, you can tell your friends what you are at the barbecue and stuff, but like, <laughs> other than that, you know, that's it. Whereas if you leverage it, you know, as a New York times, and you guys know this better than anyone as a New York times bestseller, wall street, like these are things that media really respect because they know how hard it is to hit those lists. Like you got to sell thousands, tens of thousands of books to hit these lists. So if you start reaching out strategically to get interviews after having this as a brand, it opens so many doors and it can really take your career to a whole nother level. Mm -hmm. Agreed. That's agreed. absolutely true. So gosh, I wish we could keep you on like all day. We could keep talking to you, but maybe you'll come back and talk to us again. Uh, oh, yeah. So do a shameless plug here. How can people reach you if they have questions, want to work with you? Yeah, best way is just authorsunite.com if it's author related. And then uh, we have a new course out, infinitepartnershipsystem.com that teaches you how we scaled our business online. So for any business growth stuff, that would be the best place. Excellent. You guys need That's to reach awesome. out to him because I can speak, we can speak both from experience. Having a book does give you tremendous credibility. It separates you from the pack instantly. Mm -hmm. and positions you as an authority and uh, that's a shameless plug for tyler so <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. I love well it. tyler thank you so much for being on be bold branding and giving us some bold tips today we appreciate yeah. it and I, i've actually got another uh, follow-up question right here because it's important like do you think that what do you think is the best genre so if somebody wants to write a poetry book let's just say um oh, you, you have clients and help clients with that same thing i mean uh you know, is there a specific? Because I know that we're entrepreneurial based, right? And so entrepreneurial based businesses or based books can lead into entrepreneurial based businesses, right? That, that you can leverage on those books. But what if somebody wants to write a children's book or a poetry book or uh, something like that? Yeah, it's a similar way. So we have worked with, I'd say maybe like 40, 50 fiction books, uh, children's and a couple poetry um, the pathway that I would take for that, and again, your ROI is, is definitely going to be longer than like a nonfiction business type book. Mm -hmm. um, but really what you'd want to do is still do a launch and hit a bestseller list just so you can like put that on the cover really helps to sell more books down the road. And then secondly, it would be book reviews on Amazon, right? So a lot of books out there, like they have under a hundred reviews, a, a lot of books, a lot have under 10 reviews. And just mm -hmm. psychologically speaking, if somebody hits that page and they don't already know you, and it has, I, I'd say less than a hundred reviews, it's hard to get that person's trust to make that purchase. So we have a tool that we send uh, to people. I'll send to you guys after as well. A lot of my clients use it and it's like a community of readers uh, helps them get like 50 Amazon reviews a month. So in a year, you could have over 500 reviews on that book, which is huge. You know, as you guys sure. know, like if you have in two years, you could have over a thousand reviews. So that, so get your reviews up, then Amazon advertising, right? So then with Amazon ads, um, and our team does this too, is you can target specific keywords and other books that are similar to yours, right? right? So just imagine how this is progressing is you hit bestseller, you have hundreds to over a thousand reviews, you have Amazon ads targeting your specific audience, that'll keep the book selling and up in the ranks. And then the last part would be hiring, you know, someone like yourselves to get in front of media to stay top of mind. And all of this put together, the overall goal is just to get that book, no matter what genre, into as many hands as possible with the goal of having a chance that word of mouth could take over, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And um, that's really what it is. If you can get your book in enough hands, um, then at some point, as long as the book's good, right? And people like it, you can sit back after that because people will tell others. And that's how the four hour work week got in my hand. Like four or five different people told me. And I finally was like, you know what? 
I'm going to try this reading a book thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, it worked out. So yeah. Look where it led. <laughs> yeah. well, that's really good advice, Tyler. Really that's good That's great. Stuff. It proves yeah. once again that the principles are the same. Mm -hmm. No yeah. matter what genre, you know, the book is, no matter what industry, no matter, you know, what you're talking about, the principles are the same. Some may take a little longer than others to come to fruition, depending upon, again, those business books work the best because there's generally a back end funnel with those. But, uh, but still, the principles are the same. I love it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. thank you again for coming on Be Bold. I appreciate it. Of course. Thanks for having me. Okay, so if you guys have questions about your brand, want to learn more about us, head to discussyourbrand.com and schedule a session with our team. Yep. And hey, guys, listen, we do Be Bold Podcast because it's about prosperity. And when we say prosperity, we're not just talking about money. We're talking about the 360 of a full abundant life that we truly wish for every one of you guys. But we know here at Brand Face that prosperity favors the bold. So we say be bold, especially with your brand. <laughs> in 2022 coming up and thank you miss tanya and thank you mr tyler for joining us today thanks guys we'll see you next time on be bold branding brought to you by brand face the only comprehensive personal brand building system across the globe